Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating ribbon lettering in Illustrator. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. This is a really fun effect that you can use all year long for any occasion. It works really well for Valentine's Day, for birthdays, special occasions, greeting cards, and even the holidays at the end of the year. So I'm sure there's a bunch of different methods in order to achieve this look. I'm going to share my method, which I find to be pretty quick compared to doing it all from scratch. This method definitely speeds the whole process along. So I'm going to move this over to the side to get it out of the way and then I can just work right directly on this artboard. I prepared lettering ahead of time and you can see that I've reduced the amount of points that are in the lettering quite a bit. Um, this is a more advanced tutorial so just to give you a heads up if you're not familiar with adjusting points yet in Illustrator I would definitely get more familiar with that before jumping into a tutorial like this because we're going to be manipulating points quite a bit following this method. So just something to be aware of ahead of time. So this is my lettering that I've got all prepared and what I'm going to do is just make a copy of this and move it over to the side to create the initial ribbon effect. So I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and then just hit my arrow over key once and that will make a copy and now I've released the alt key or the option key on a Mac and now I'm just going to hit the arrow over key just a few times until I'm happy with the placement or the thickness of my ribbon. So that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to leave it right there and now I'm going to come over to the ends and make these ribbon like so I'm just going to grab my pen tool hit P on your keyboard for that I'm going to attach to my anchor right here and then just give this one a little notch so it looks more like a ribbon I'm going to do the exact same thing at the end over here Okay, so now both of these lines are connected right here, but you can tell we still have a ways to go before we get our completed ribbon effect. So the next thing that I do is wherever we have these gaps right here, this is pretty unattractive when it's converted to a fill. You can see we've got this huge break right here. So I like moving my points just a little closer so it looks more like they're overlapping. So it feels more like a twisting ribbon rather than this really harsh, distracting transition right here. So let me switch this back to a stroke and what I'm going to do, let me come up to the top of this one. I'm just going to move, I've got my direct select key selected so hit A on your keyboard and I'm going to grab these points and move them just a little closer to each other a little bit at a time until they're right on top of each other and then if I zoom out you can see everything's been distorted right here and I want it to be a little more normal but now I've got these points right on top of each other. So if you're ever curious about which point to adjust with the handles um, for the lines, all you have to do is deselect everything and say I want this line to move further to the left. All I have to do is click on it with my direct select tool and then I get the handle that I need to adjust to reposition that. So I'm gonna hold shift so I can keep this handle straight and you can see I can fix those areas pretty easily that way. I don't like how short this is coming up right here so I want to move this line closer to the inside so I'm going to tap on this and now I've got my handle that I can move in and I can move this point in as well. I'm going to move this one okay so now when I flip this to a fill it's a more gradual transition. Instead of having two harsh angles meet right up here, now this is a smooth curved transition right here instead of just a point right in the middle. So that's what I'm going for is just having smoother transitions. So you can see we've got this huge gap right here and now this is nice and smooth and continuous right here. This is what the before looked like and now this is our after, this nice smooth curve along the top. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come through and adjust all those areas so right here here will be next and then down here in the top of my E and then you're going to leave these points right here where you have them coming down in a straight line we're going to actually notch these later so for the downstroke of this H and then the downstrokes of the Y over here so right here right here and right here we're going to notch those later so don't worry about those right now I'm going to speed up the video and come through these curved areas and fix them just like I did with this H
Okay, so I've got all of those curves smoothed out now. And if I switch to a fill right here, you'll be able to see what that looks like. So now I've got these continuous curves going instead of double curves happening. So all that looks really good. So I'm ready to move forward. I'm going to switch this back to a stroke. Now that we have everything all fixed, instead of going and just filling it in where we have all this kind of weirdness happening where there's overlaps, we can fix this and still apply a fill by using our Pathfinder palette so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to drop in just a regular pink color. I'll give you that pink color. Um, we want this to be a fill instead of a stroke. So I've got my fill up here and this color is going to be 218 28 92 and I'm just going to send this to the back. So Command Shift open bracket or Control Shift open bracket on a PC and now I'm going to select everything and go to your Pathfinder palette. You can get to your Pathfinder by going Window, Pathfinder, and you're going to hit the Divide option right here. So just do that, and then you're gonna ungroup, Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G on a PC, and now I can select all my extra pink area and delete it. So I'm going to select this part, this part, and this part. Okay, so this is exactly what we want this to look like at this stage. So the first thing I want to do is put in these extra notches for the areas of my ribbon that are missing right now. So this area and then these two areas. So I'm just going to zoom in here and then just draw this shape in with my pen tool. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to merge this new shape with the downstroke. So I'm going to hold shift and select this portion of the downstroke and then hit the unite icon right here in my Pathfinder palette. And now this is all united as one continuous shape now. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the Y and I'm going to unite it with the downstrokes of the Y. So this shape is going to get merged with the new notched area and then this shape is going to get merged with it. Okay, and if you have any areas where it doesn't look super appealing, like this little area right here, all I have to do is select it and then hit my delete anchor point tool, which is your hyphen key on your keyboard, and then just delete that and then you're all set to go. Okay, so now we can begin coloring everything in so it looks more ribbon-like. So I'm going to give you two different gradients that we're going to be using. We're going to have a highlight gradient and a shadow gradient. So the way that I do this is I draw out some rectangles and I've got two rectangles right here. And the, for the first rectangle, you're going to come to your gradient palette. You can get to that by going window gradient. And I actually find it easier if I pull it away from my side panel. So I'm just going to grab the tab and drag it out. And then I've got my color palette right here that I can work with as I'm building my gradient. So first I need to drag this color into my gradient. So just click and drag and you can add it right in. And now I need to duplicate this. So I'm just going to hold Alt on my keyboard and drag a color here and drag a color here. And now I can just take my black and just drag it off and same with my white. So I've got my original pink on the outsides and we're going to change the pink color on the center dot right here. So we're going to change that one to a lighter one because this is going to be our highlight gradient. So so the light color is going to be 253 and I'm just putting this in up here on in my color palette but I've got it selected in my gradient palette you can see that it's selected right here so very important 99 and then 166 so that's the color build for the really light pink and then we want to adjust these nodes so everything feels more even so with this node we want it positioned at 65 percent and then this one's going to be positioned at 35 percent Okay, and then you can see it's vertical right now and we want it to be horizontal. So I'm just going to change this to 90 degrees right there and that's exactly what we want it to look like. Now we're going to build up our dark colored gradient. So with this selected, we're going to come back to our gradient palette. So just click into it and it will apply the same gradient to this color rectangle, but now we're going to change the colors within this gradient. So we want our center gradient to be the original pink color. So I'm just going to drag this over and I can drag this one over here. So this one's in the center now. I can make the location 50%, so it's exactly in the center. And now for the outside color, I'm going to select this and I'm going to change it to a really dark pink. So this color build is 81, 15, 21. 
and I want it on both sides so I'm going to hold alt click and drag and that will give me a copy I can drag this one off drag it all the way to the end and then once again reposition these little nodes at 65% and 35% and then we want to change the angle to 90% so it's horizontal like our highlight so we've got our highlight and our shadows and now we're all set to go with coloring everything in Okay, so for this first downstroke of our ribbon, we're going to apply a highlight. So all you have to do is select the element and then hit I on your keyboard for your eyedropper tool and then just eyedropper this new rectangle that we made and that will apply the gradient and then you can reposition the gradient within this shape by hitting G on your keyboard and then just dragging it out. So we want the light pink to be in the center of all of these elements. Okay, so now we're going to do a shadow one. You can see that we've got this upstroke that's split in half because the downstroke comes through it. So there's a portion right here and there's a portion right here. And we need Illustrator to recognize this as all one shape even though they're disconnected. So in order to do that, you're going to select the first shape, hold shift, select the second shape so they're both selected. And now we're going to create a compound path and that will tell Illustrator consider this one shape even though it's made up of two separate shapes. So in order to do that, you can hit Command and 8 or control 8 on a PC and now whenever I select one they both get selected. Now I can hit I on my keyboard for my eyedropper tool, eyedropper my rectangle for my dark gradient and then readjust it by hitting the G key on your keyboard and dragging it out. So I want this highlight to be right around the center which that looks pretty good and you can stretch it out if you want it to be longer and you can see how this transition right here extends all the way into this component that's disconnected connected from it. So that is what our compound shape allows us to do. Okay, so now we've got a downstroke again, but it's split up because when we divided everything, when we were filling this in with pink, it split up all these different shapes. So we just need to unite these together. So select this one, hold shift, select this middle one, and then select this one. And now they're all selected. We're going to come over to our Pathfinder palette and hit the unite icon right here. And that makes it all one shape. Now we can hit I on our keyboard for our eyedropper, eyedropper our highlight gradient, and then and readjust it by hitting G on your keyboard and stretching out for the angle that you would like it to be. Okay, so now let's zoom out a little bit. We can see how it's looking so far and that's looking really good. If you change your mind about any shapes, like I'm noticing that you can kind of tell where my anchor points are in this shape, I can still hit A on my keyboard and adjust these anchor points. So I can make this a smoother curve right here. I can still do this after the fact. It's entirely editable, everything that we're doing. So it makes it really handy. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to come through the rest of the word and do the exact same thing that we've been doing. For upstrokes, I've got my shadows that I'm applying and then just reposition them. And then my downstrokes are the highlights. Okay, we've come to the situation where we've got the two that are disconnected again. So once again, you just wanna make sure both of these are selected and then hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC to create a compound shape. And now I can eyedropper my gradient and then stretch it out. And then same thing over here, I've got three separate shapes, so I need to unite them together. Hold Shift, make sure they're all selected first and then hit the Unite icon in your Pathfinder palette. Okay, once you have all of your gradients in and you saw me just adjusting a few small areas just to thicken them up and then to just have it pop a little bit more, I like putting a background color behind it um, or you can just leave it on white. This light pink color, here's the color build for that if you'd like to use the same one. There is our final ribbon lettering effect in Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more design tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.